Well, Erin and I are at our hangar with our little 172 named Ellie, and we have not done many flying videos lately, and we've gotten no. a lot of requests for them, so we will be doing more soon. Yeah, won't be flying today. It's a little bit windy, and I've been out of the game for a while, so we're not going to take that risk, but we've got other stuff to do here. So our friends at DeBoss Garage asked us to be judges in their car show and they have a special section, a special category that is very near and dear to our hearts because you guys know we love boats and airplanes. So this is a category called Mad Props, which I actually came up with the name idea for. And so we get to sit down on our little couch over there and look at all of the entries and the public got to vote so we'll be able to see who liked what and what got the most votes but we actually have the final say in who wins this category so we're really excited to sit down and check out all the different projects builds vehicles modes of transportation that involve a prop so we're stoked on that and uh, if you guys are interested to see you better watch shop dog is present and lazy as usual. You ready, Finley? You ready? Check out this cool pillow that I got Aaron for Christmas one year. It's got Ellie on one side and Zen on the other. Some cool little app called Zazzle. You can upload any photos from your camera roll and uh, get stuff, mugs and pillows and stuff. Ah. <sighs> Good view. <laughs> we got our guard dog. He's making sure nobody uh, intrudes. <laughs> and there we are. Let's go check him out. Alrighty, let's find Mad Props right over here. Mad Props. Oh, babe, we got some airplanes and mm -hmm. some boats. So cool. All right, let's break them each down. How's this one in here? Hmm, have to look through that. 46 J3 Piper. Look at the sweet smile on this man's face. I love him. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Hand propping it. And you have some memory. Well, we just finished watching the video submission and it was so sweet. He talked about how he inherited the plane from his father-in-law who bought it back in the 60s and it's just really, really awesome. We, of course, are aviation enthusiasts, so seeing this man's story and his love for this airplane and even getting to see him fly it was absolutely awesome. Big thumbs up on that submission. Yep. Really like that one. Always I love the J3 Cubs. Oh Such gosh. a neat, iconic airplane. They're so sweet. A lot of pilots learn that plane. All right, let's check out some more. Yeah. So we love the history that this boat has. The guy that rebuilt it says that it belonged to his dad and his dad had owned it since 1990 and he was two when he got it. So he grew up behind that boat. And last summer, since they couldn't do much racing, they ended up rebuilding it from the bottom to the top, painted it to match his 74 Maverick, which I love. He says that the Maverick will tow the boat to the lake again, just like it did 30 plus years ago. We love this. This is so cool. Uh, there's so much about the vehicles that we build that revolve around memories and creating more memories with family. And this is a really cool example of that because I'm sure his dad is so proud. That is awesome. Ooh, how about this little bird? 67 Cessna 150 G model. Yeah, that's basically the two seat version of the one you see back here. Of Ellie, yeah. Oh my gosh, I actually love this paint job. I know it's <laughs> a little bunged up and it needs some love, but I love this sweeping graphic right here. It's so cute. So we just have one picture. I want to see more. He says his Blue Angel style paint adds 175.3 horsepower. <laughs> It says ADF antenna delete. We need to do it on that plane. That piece of wire going from the tail to the front. Yeah, it's hard to see. Outdated. We don't use that equipment anymore. You can see the end of the wire right up there. It's really hard to see that wire. You can sort of see it right there. Not much to say. All my money goes to 100 low lead. 
when he says all ADs complied with, that's airworthiness directive. The FAA will tell you if there's a major fault in this airplane that you have to get it fixed. And it's not airworthy if you don't get that stuff done. So yep. when we bought our airplane, we had to have a mechanic look through all that and make sure everything had been complied with. So yep. that's good. That means it may look a little junky, but it is a safe airplane and it's been checked out. That's right. Love that little bird. So cute. Ooh, a 1985 31 foot Duffy. Duffy's a good name for a boat. I agree. I oh, really, check that out. I really like it. Look at her. I'm a sucker for a sweet story. <laughs> Aaron's laughing at me. Oh my gosh, <laughs> y'all, that is such a sweet story. It really is. Uh, two brothers who are lobster fishermen bought this boat and named it after their grandfather who had a dream of being a lobster fisherman, but he was in the blueberry business. And after he got out of the Marines, he went back to the family blueberry business, but always wanted to be a lobster fisherman. And they told a story of him going out with some of his friends and dropping one of the traps on his toe, but he, it didn't stop him. He didn't care. He was like, I'm having so much fun. Let's keep going. And he had an article written about him because of that story. That is such a sweet and cool mm -hmm. story. Um, I was just literally getting ready to say mad props to those two <laughs> brothers. <laughs> you know, when you make decisions to add something to your life that is so meaningful like that to keep you inspired and driven, that is just so cool. All right, 1993 Kit Fox. These are cool little airplanes. That's a great little airplane. Those are home built. So you buy a kit and assemble it yourself. The interesting thing is that makes the airplane experimental. So you do not have to be a licensed airplane mechanic and you can do all your work. Yep. There's two different types of like airplanes. You have a certified aircraft, which is like Ellie, um, where the work and all of the parts are very regimented and expensive and they're very the FAA is very serious about it or you have experimental um, aircraft which can be home built by someone in their own garage and they just go by their own rules a lot more affordable because a GPS in our airplane would cost twice as much as one for that because it's got to be certified and it has to be the company's got to go through the process of getting it certified for that specific airplane. So if this uh, experimental is a much cheaper way to go. And I, Emily and I'll probably do it at some point when we get a little bit older, have a little more time on our hands. We'll build something, I'll bet you. Yeah, it would be awesome. But you can just choose any power plant. Like there's a viral <laughs> picture of a Cessna with an LS in it. And you cannot legally do that unless you change your aircraft over to be an experimental right, right? Mm -hmm. it's no longer a certified yep. cessna 172 certified aircraft it is a, an experimental because you've changed the power plant and all the things associated with that but these types of airplanes are really cool lots of cool toys there all right let's check out this 85 centurion tunnel hull boat what you're looking at here is a 1985 Centurion Pickle Fork Tunnel Hull. Only a hundred of them made, and this one's number 81 of the bunch. Nice. That is a wild looking nose on that boat. That is so cool. Waiting for the nice weather. Yeah, aren't we all? Take this thing out. I <laughs> love it. This is an interesting one. This is an X Air Force target drone <laughs> and mods it flies. <laughs> or it did. <laughs> right now it's just hanging in someone's really cool shop or garage. That is really neat. The history on that is probably wild. I'm curious as to what all that thing's seen. Yeah, if it's a target drone, my guess is whoever was shooting at it, it's not a very good shot. Right. Because uh, it still exists. <laughs> it looks pretty intact. <laughs> that's, I, I really don't know how that works, but it's that's pretty cool. Really neat. What's this one? 2020 home build Livingston eight foot catamaran hull with 15 horsepower Johnson outboard full charge circuit. <laughs> what do we got here? 
I love that shit. Well, that's a, a cute little boat. Can you just love metal I ever did see? My boat's not bigger than that. Is there anyone driving that? <laughs> an unmanned object right here <laughs> and that's all the video was oh my gosh that's funny that is a very cool little boat went in lockdown in march of 2020 <laughs> no way didn't we all need to keep busy so i started the demo on this livingston eight foot dinghy that i had in my yard for years it was something i always wanted to do but never had the time to do he did all the demo repair glasswork and gel coat in 36 days working on it every day and that's, that's pretty a, impressive. That's really cool. That's a lot of hard work. That's a really cool little boat. I would love to go out on that thing. Yeah, I mean, it'd be a great one to tow behind the big boat. Yeah, it would. Dig it. <laughs> Somebody was real clever. The container ship that got wedged in that canal. Oh my gosh. Highly advanced steering technology upgraded hydrodynamics. Wind resistant hull. My company, Evergreen Marine Corp built this golden class container ship in 2020. We built it specifically to navigate the world's smallest canals with ease. <laughs> Next stop, Panama. That is funny, even that viral picture. What's this picnic table boat situation? 55 gallon drum floaters with a two and a half horsepower motor. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I wanna go hang out on it for sure. With the price of lumber right now, that's an expensive boat. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's high dollar stuff right there. Man, I'm telling you. Myself and a few mates knocked this up in a few hours for a laugh. And after a quick test on the water hole, we decided it needed to be shown off to the public. We took it to Hobart, our capital city, and unloaded it at a boat ramp and then took it around the harbor. It was New Year's. We drew a pretty big crowd. The best part was the end of Sydney Harbor Yacht Race. We motored our picnic table around million dollar racing yachts for hours. Eventually, the local news got in contact and we even got it into national TV. <laughs> Not a bad afternoon project, really. That is so funny, y'all. That's fun. I love it. That's great. Look at this little Mercury Monterey. How'd she end up in here? Oh, oh she has a boat behind her. Thanks to a Craigslist find, I was able to complete the dream by finding an original made for the car trailer hitch. So I'm able to tow my restored fiberglass boat pictured a 1958 cutter, which my dad and I restored in 2014. That is a really cool setup. So awesome. Sailboat over there. Yep, let's take a look at this 1979 Hurley 22. Sailing is something I really want to get into. I've always wanted to learn to sail. Oh, it looks so pretty in the water. Look at her. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. So it looks like he is living aboard on this sailboat, which is really cool. And he's trying to live aboard with this big dog, so it's pretty cramped, he says. <laughs> That's a really, really cool boat, though. Oh man, I love it. Got a 1981 Gator Solutions bass boat. Let's click on her. We just watched the video and she told us about her boat, but she hasn't worked on it much since COVID. And so as we know how projects can be, they can just wait patiently. And that will be a really, really cool fishing boat when she gets done with it. All right, 1974, 16 foot fiber form boat, 120 horsepower Mercruiser stern drive. Oh, I like that two tone, actually three tone. That's pretty. Done some motor work on it. I like their little canopy that they use to work on mm -hmm. it. Done some interior work on it. Well, I see pistons and a head right there. Keep at it on this boat. This last sentence is interesting. This boat will be my primary transportation for the summer. They're gonna use this boat a lot in the summertime. I like it. Okay, this looks like a cool little boat. 1971 Checkmate Mini Sprint, 15 foot. Oh my gosh, that would be so fun to rip around in. Mods, no mods? Well, not yet. This is my first boat I bought at 19. It's a 1971 Checkmate Mini Sprint, and it's a pretty rare boat. It is powered with a late 80s inline six-cylinder 115 Mariner, better known as the Tower of Power. It reminds me of our Liberator. 
That's a little tiny boat. It's got more than one seat as ours has two, but it's known as the Widowmaker because apparently it likes to flip over backwards at full throttle. So we don't use that boat. <laughs> yeah, not many people know that we actually have a Liberator uh, jet boat. It's not really a jet boat, it's an outdrive, but it looks like a jet boat. Mm -hmm. um, hole in our backyard. We painted it, painted the bottom, and then we never got to painting the top because a lot of people told us like, that's a really dangerous boat. And we were like, no, yeah. oh, we should probably pull that out and finish it and sell yeah. it. Yeah, I think we should. We it's, have the engine port. It is most definitely abandoned. We have yeah. uh, not touched it and it's just sitting back there in, in the trees yeah. at the back of our property. Anyway, yeah, this little boat is really, really cool. I like it. This is something different. 2018 Adventure Pluma powered paraglider. Awesome. I think that would be fun. I would love to do this. Oh my goodness. Love it. He says all carbon fiber, but otherwise factory. <laughs> That's so cool. And it really is neat the way they change the wings out on these things, depending on the flying conditions. It's really neat. He says that the aviation bug bit him hard when he was living in Bangkok, Thailand in 2015. He got into powered paragliding and found it to be the closest thing to being a bird. That's so neato. Dude, that is rad. How about the little Coleman CT200U 2014 model? What you got? Oh, we can't see it. Mods, upgraded engine, all one word. <laughs> well, dang, I guess we have to use our imagination. I don't know what that is. All right. Last one to look at, 1965, Cobia Sea Queen. I love this Sea Queen name, that's cool. That is a sweet boat. They're in Canada. Mods, 115 Johnson Seahorse. It's a pretty rare boat, completely restored and handles like a champ and gets used a few times a season. Awesome. We have to choose a winner, y'all. It's awesome to see all the folks that went in and voted and looked at all the different submissions. And we have to be honest that we agree with the prop laden vehicle that got the most votes, which yep. is that very first Piper Cub. Yep. That is just such a beautiful airplane. And they actually took a lot of time with their submission, making that nice video, showing the plane flying, having the owner talk about the plane and all of the reasons that it's special to him. That was just a really great submission and it's a beautiful bird. And yeah. we think we agree with all the folks that voted. That is the most deserving winner in this category. And it's just, it's so cool to see everyone's different projects and what they value and all their goals for it. It's just awesome. You guys rock. That's a neat airplane. It's one that I always wanted to fly. It's simple technology. There's not an electrical system in it. So you hand prop it. I mean, there's the fuel gauge isn't even electric. So I think that's neat. 1946, I think it was. It's just amazing that we're able to keep these things flying. And we go through a lot of maintenance every year. We go through an annual inspection once a year. And I think that's why you see more older airplanes in better conditions than you see older cars. And they're still just as useful today as they were back then. And for that, I think it was really cool. So that is our choice for the winner of our Mad Props category in the DeBoss Car Show. Super, super great car show. And all of the proceeds from the merchandise that they sell from the car show, they also donated to a very deserving charity. So um, Rich and Aaron, they do such a fantastic job and we love those guys so much. And huge thanks to them for asking us to be judges on such a special category. Yeah, us. we appreciate it. It's awesome stuff. See you next time. Later.